Have you ever been in a car or a bus or even a roller coaster when you're going over a bump or into a dip? When you go over a bump, you probably feel like you're going to fall out of your seat. When you're going through a dip, you probably feel like you're being pushed down into the seat. So when an object rides over a hill or into a dip, the normal force from the surface is affected by a centripetal motion. So it changes how you feel if you feel heavier or lighter. We sometimes call this feeling of heaviness or lightness an object's apparent weight. You might remember from dynamics that apparent weight is what we draw on our free body diagram as normal force. Normal force is the same as the force of a surface pushing against an object, and it's always perpendicular to that surface. So if you remember those elevator problems that we had in dynamics, the person is standing on an elevator, and the elevator is accelerating downward, how did that person feel? Or if the elevator is accelerating upward, how did that person feel? We know that the net force on an object moving in a circle is always towards the center. So for this ball at the top of the circle, the, force is, the net force is down and the acceleration is down. If this ball is at the bottom of the circle, the net force would be up and the acceleration would be up. So this is just like those elevator problems. And if an object is at, let's say, the top of a hill, the force is down and the acceleration is down. If an object is at the bottom of a dip, the force is up and the acceleration is up. As you can see, the concept of circular motion can be used for any object moving along a curved path even if it is not a complete circle. So it could be used for a hill or a dip. So let's try a problem together. A car is traveling at a velocity of 20 meters per second. The driver of the car has a mass of 60 kilograms and the car is located at the bottom of a dip in the road and the radius of the dip is 80 meters. What is the apparent weight of the driver, which is the normal force su supplied by the seat of the car to support him, at the bottom of the dip? So, they have all the variables written out for us. Velocity is 20 meters per second. Mass, 60 kilograms. Radius, 80 meters. So what is our first step? So the first thing you should always do in a problem is draw a free body diagram. We love free body diagrams. So, the dot represents the car. The car is at the bottom of a circle, which means the acceleration is towards the center. The center happens to be up. So what are other forces do we have acting on this car, or this person in the car? Well, we know we have mg down. Right? We're assuming that this car is somewhere on the surface of the Earth we would also have the normal force supplied by the seat of the car on the person. Now you can see that the acceleration is up, which means the net force has to be up. So that indicates that the normal force has to be bigger than mg. So I'm going to draw that vector longer than mg. And that's my free body diagram. What's the next step? So the next step is to apply Newton's second law. So if you remember, Newton's second law is sigma f equals ma. So now we're going to do this just like we did it in dynamics. So what's our sigma f? Well, we've got normal force pointing up, mg pointing down. That means we have normal force minus mg. Now we know that it's moving in a circle, so A can be replaced with V squared over R. So we have M V squared over R. So now from this, we can solve for normal force. So to get normal force by itself, we need to add Mg to both sides. Okay, so we have minus Mg plus Mg, so those go away on that side. So we have normal force is equal to 
m v squared over r plus mg. So as you can see, the normal force is going to be bigger than mg, just like we said in our free body diagram. Now if you want to, you can factor out the m's, since they're in both terms. So I have m, and then in parentheses, v squared over r plus g. So now that we have it all solved out for a normal force, we can plug in our numbers. So I have normal force equals m, which was 60 kilograms. Uh, v, v was 20 meters per second, right? That's squared. Divided by the radius, which is 80 meters, plus g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So you see what you're going to get here, you get kilograms, then on the top of this you've got a meter squared and you've got a meters here, so one of these is going to cancel out with that. So we have units of meters per second squared plus another meters per second squared. So we'll end up with kilograms times meters per second squared, which is the same as newtons. And of course, force should be in newtons. So when you calculate this, normal force ends up being 888 newtons. So how does that compare to this person's normal weight on, let's say, flat part of road? So if you were just to calculate this person's weight, weight is equal to mg. So that would be 60 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared give you 590 newtons. So his weight on flat road is 590, and at the bottom of the dip is 888. So that's why you feel heavier at the bottom of a dip. So that gravitational force on the driver doesn't change, but the apparent weight does. That's why you feel heavier, but you're not actually heavier. So, do you think there's a situation where this driver is going to appear weightless? So, let's try um, almost the same problem, except instead of a dip, now we have a hill. So again, we're moving at uh, 20 meters per second, and the driver is still 60 kilograms, and the radius of this hill is 80 meters. So, first thing that you have to do? Free body diagram. Remember, we love free body diagrams, that's how you always start. So if they're at the top of the circle, means the center is downwards, so the acceleration is downward. Okay. So again, we have mg a normal force, but if the acceleration is down, then the net force should be down, which means mg is going to be bigger than the normal force. Okay. So next step, Newton's second law, sigma f is equal to ma. So, now we have normal force is up, minus mg down. Now the acceleration is down, so that means we have to make ma negative. And again, it's circular motion, so we replace a with v squared over r. Okay? So everything I have pointing up is positive, right? Only normal force. Everything that's pointing down, which is mg, and uh, a is down, that's negative. So again, we are trying to solve for normal force, so we're going to add mg to both sides. Cancels out on that side, just like last time. So we have normal force is equal to mg minus mv squared over r. Again, if you want to, you can factor out m. So I got m, and then I have g minus v squared over r. Okay. Now I can plug in numbers. So normal force, right? The mass is still 60 kilograms. g is still going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. V 
is 20 meters per second and R is 80 meters. Okay. So what is normal force going to come out to be? When you calculate that, the normal force comes out to be 288 newtons. So remember that on the flat surface, this person's regular weight was 590 newtons. Right? So 288 newtons is less than that. So this person would feel lighter going over the hill than if they were just on a flat surface. So that's why you feel lighter when you're going over like the top of a roller coaster. You're not actually lighter, but you just feel that way. At what velocity must a car drive over a hill if the driver, and even the car for that matter, are to appear weightless? So we know from before that apparent weight is the same as normal force. So if this driver is appearing weightless, it means it doesn't have a normal force. So normal force can be set equal to zero. So also think back to our free body diagram for an object on a hill. We had normal force up, and we had mg down, and mg was longer than normal force. And acceleration was towards the center, so that was also down. Okay, this is the same as what we had before. So we can use our sigma F equals MA, same that we had before. Our sigma F in this case would be Fn minus Mg equals negative MV squared over R. But since the normal force is equal to zero, I can take out normal force from my equation. I can also divide both sides by negative one, so this negative sign and this negative sign cancels out. I can also divide both sides by m, so this m cancels and so does this. So what are we left with? Well, it's g equals v squared over r. Now we're solving for V, so I want to multiply both sides by R. That goes away, so I have RG is equal to V squared, and then I don't want the squared there, so I have to square root both sides. So I end up with V is equal to the square root of R times G. So that is the square root of 80 meters times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now as you can see, mass doesn't fit anywhere in here. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about the driver or the car or anybody in there, right? It doesn't matter how much this person weighs, everybody in this car is going to appear weightless going at this speed. So when we calculate it, we get 28 meters per second. So going over this hill, you need to go 28 meters per second and then everything in the car, everybody in it, no matter what the weight, is going to appear weightless. So there's one more thing I want to go over before you try the rest of the problems, and that has to do with buckets and roller coasters. Okay, so let's think of um, a bucket when it's at the top of its path. So if I draw my bucket Right, kind of like that, and let's say it's going around like this. Okay, so if you think of the free body diagram for this bucket, it's at the top of a circle. That means acceleration is down, towards the center. So we know that mg is always going to be down, right? Always towards the center of the earth, always down towards the ground. But which way is the string pulling this bucket? The string is pulling the bucket downward, so the force of tension is also down. So here everything is pointing down. So when you do your sigma f equals ma, you might as well make down to be positive. So I can say ft 
plus mg equals mv squared over r. And then to find tension, you would just do some algebra same way we did before. So that's a, a bucket. A bucket at the bottom is actually the same as a dip. So you can do that the same way. The other thing that we can talk about is a roller coaster. So think about going over the loop on a roller coaster. So here's my inside loop and the roller coaster is right here and this guy is going that way. Okay, so he's on the inside of the loop. Okay, a little bit different than the hill because the hill, the car would have been over here, but now it's underneath. Okay, so again, it's at the top of a circle. The center is down. Acceleration is towards the center, down. MG always has to be down, always pointing to the ground. But which way is the normal force applied? Well, here's the surface, and here's the roller coaster car, so the surface is actually pushing down. So the normal force is also down. So whether it's a bucket or a roller coaster, they have almost the same free body diagram, right? Except one you're using force of tension and the other one you're using the normal force. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're doing the other problems. So remember to start all these problems out with number one. First thing that you should always do is draw, you guessed it, a free body diagram, always. And two, the second thing that you always have to do is use Newton's second law, which is sigma f equals ma, right? That's it. So now you have to go on and try the rest of the problems with buckets and roller coasters.